the debt so that he keeps up to his promise. So please, sir, forgive me. I did not say President Taga in the President Bali is a liar. Mm. I am not uh, a person who gets involved in vulgar language in South Africa. I only tell the truth. And I've said the truth here. I don't believe that presidents can be liars. The president indeed told us he's going to give us a surprise government. Yes, what he gave us was not a surprise government at all. He missed it. Out of the 25 ministers that he appointed, 10 belong to a government that the PF defeated in 2011. Uh, so, but Diana, you can see from this that 2026, Chika Baicha from to 10 of these guys are from the government that we defeated. The other 15 are all novices. But, but they're, they're crossed long back. Yes, they crossed long, long back. Some of Ambassador Frank, some of, them were, some of them were ministers whining and dining with Edgar Lungu until three months before elections. So, <laughs> so anyway, let's leave that. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah. The second, for instance, President Bali promised the Zambian people is going to run a lean cabinet of 18 members. Huh? Now he has 25 or more. Again, broken promise. He told us he's going to have a youthful government. The first people he appointed, the majority of whom were people he went and dug up from retirement. People had long retired. Experience. Yeah, but at the time that and, he was... And, and there's some young people but, but in this government. How many are there? Four. Yeah, out of 25. Well, Actually, two out of 25. There's, there's, there's he told style. us he's going, to, he's going to have a gender-sensitive gender government. It's evolving. It's no, evolving. No, you know, this government, no, I, I, six I, I, months down the line, this government may not be the same. You remember, remember yeah. what I said? I said, you mm. must be cautious. As a politician, mm. you must be cautious how you put your statements. Mm. If you say, I shall gradually do this, then people will believe you. Mm. And if you put it as a statement of fact, then it's a fact. It must mm. be mm. done there and then. Yeah. So when I say that President uh, Bali must keep his promises, it's because I don't want him to end up earning the name uh, Bali Muntuwagufi. BMW. I don't want the president of that name, Bali Muntu yeah. Abufi, BMW. No. I want him to escape that name. And he will escape that name by keeping his promises. For instance, he told the Zambian people, 1st of September, the price of maize will increase from 150 to 250. Please let him do that. He told the Zambian people, 1st of November, the price of mini will be 50 kwacha. Please let him do that. And I want to encourage all members of parliament, PF members of parliament especially, not to be antagonistic. Mm. Please support Bali. Support President Bali to deliver on these promises. Mm. Now, Chama, add more pressure. My friend, the way we're going to add pressure ourselves, we're not going to be like them who are walking in and out of parliament, mm. who refuse to call President Edgar Lungu president. Mm. For me, I regard President Bali as His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zambia. Yeah. I'm calling him Bali because that is his popular name. Right. I don't think that President Edgar Lungu would feel any injury mm. if we call him ECL, because yeah. that's his trademark. Mm -hmm. So when I say President Bali, I'm just using the name that he loves. Mm -hmm. President Bali must be supported. But we are going to pressure him by making sure that we keep checking the boxes that he told us to check. Mm -hmm. All the promises he made, he must deliver on them. Mm -hmm. We're not going to insult him at all. We're going to mm -hmm. keep him completely yeah. uh, in, in sufficient space for him to deliver. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is what we want. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to appeal to my friends in the Patriotic Front. I know that a lot of them uh, are living under fear. Yeah. As I speak now, there are still members of the Patriotic Front who are not in their homes mm -hmm. because they're being harassed, they're being chased, they're being intimidated. Please, please, my friends, you want elections. Allow your president now to govern in an environment of peace. Don't make your president continue to appear like a man who loves violence. Because if you perpetuate this violence, the only thing that it turns out to be is that your president is the one who loves blood. I don't think we should make him appear to be bloodthirsty. Please let the Zambians enjoy their freedoms. You just, you just made reference to that some are not in their homes. I mean, the... the, the the reports, you know, that some of them are just afraid of some of the perceived sins they committed. And uh, could you clarify that, you know, some of the PF members are running away, going out of the country because of some of the perceived sins? Have you heard anything you know, to that end? No, I haven't heard of any person who has uh, uh, left Zambia for fear of uh, prosecution. Mm -hmm. I haven't.
Uh, but if they are, then I don't think that uh, they committed any offences on behalf of the Patriotic Front. Mm. That they, may, they may have committed offences yeah. individually, but I'm not aware. Yeah. I'm not aware of any member of the Patriotic Front. Since you've made reference to that, uh, your quick comment on uh, the possible introduction of uh, uh, fast uh, uh, courts, you know, trial courts. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Very, very welcome. Brilliant. Uh, let them come in place. And yeah. Let them come up with. Uh, uh, better to dispense justice but, quickly. But let them come up with the procedures, right? That, procedures that will ensure that the courts operate without any vindictiveness. Brilliant. Have, you, them, have you left out anything there? Uh, the only thing I wanted to say is to assure uh, Chairman Mbewe and mm. Madam Diana that your party is as strong as you want to make it. So right. please don't just uh, uh, sit back and let's make sure we that's, mobilize. That's very encouraging. Let's Could you mobilize. also quickly, Vice President? Uh, comment on uh, uh, petitions, you know, and what they could do to the the performance of of parliament. The president says uh, he doesn't really like them, but he's, you know, he believes in uh, rule of law. Your your comment on that? Uh, he made it appear as though he's oblivious of the fact that his members of parliament and his councillors have petitioned. I don't believe that. I don't think that his members of parliament could have gone ahead and petitioned as widely as they have if they hadn't made a policy on it. I think that this is just a deliberate ploy. And uh, one can just assume that they are hoping that because they are in government, therefore, the petitions will go in their favor. The one thing that they are forgetting is that they are taking away energy from parliamentarians to be effective in parliament. Mm. It will take some time for yeah. these cases to be disposed Dis of, but they will be disposed of. But also, what they are losing sight of is the colossal amounts of money that are going into these petitions. Absolutely. There's a lot of money to be spent when you have a petition. I suffered a petition myself. Mm -hmm. I know how expensive it is. But uh, third and most important, uh, again, I'm saying this with mixed emotions. On one hand, I'm not so happy mm -hmm. that there are so many petitions, but on the other, I'm happy because they vindicate President mm -hmm. Edgar Chagwalungu. You remember yeah. when President Edgar Chagwalungu said these elections are not free and fair? Mm -hmm. People poured scorn on him. How could he possibly say this? Now, they themselves are going to court and saying these elections are not free and fair. On the other hand, they accept the results of the presidential election. They don't accept the results of the parliamentary elections, yeah. and yet they were held together. So this, this, if you see, is again a, a, an element of inconsistency. But for me, I'm very happy because our members are also now lined up to go and expose all the atrocities mm -hmm. that were occasioned during these elections. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we are also going to expose what they right. did during the, the elections. The, the, the other issue, the continued stay of a number of uh, permanent secretaries in their jobs and you know even advisors still in the, the jobs. I just take it that the president is, is taking his time, is moving meticulously, but again, the mixed views on this. Will you stand in a vice president? What is your position on this? Uh, with regard to permanent secretaries, uh, I can uh, understand that it will take some time mm. because those people have to prepare handovers and so on and so forth, and you can't just disrupt yeah. the whole system. However, uh, like the other one said, a person who's ready to form government will not take a month to compose his cabinet. Mm. A person who's ready to take uh, cabinet would act as swiftly as, Ed, as President Michael Sata did, as swiftly as Edgar Lungu did. Mm -hmm. For him, it's very clear that uh, he would, was least expected of forming government. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why it took him so long. But uh, very well, he's finally yeah. done it. Yeah. But also, uh, talking about continuity in government, unfortunately for him, the speech that was given to him to deliver to Parliament on the opening of the 13th National Assembly was obviously not his speech. Mm. Uh, that speech, and like uh, Honorable Moore mm. said, that speech was written by technocrats. Mm. And I can assure you that those top technocrats had written that speech long before the elections. Mm. And they too were anticipating President mm. Edgar mm. to read that speech. Right. So it was a speech written mm. following the PF manifesto. That's why you see a lot of things in that speech which are borrowed directly from the PF manifesto. Right. I'm hoping that uh, when he comes with his budget, he will come up with a budget that will reflect mm -hmm. his party manifesto, not the PF manifesto. Talk about the budget, uh, what are your expectations and in view of where the economy is right now? Number one thing uh, for me uh, is actually, this was a missed opportunity by President uh, Bali 
You remember on BBC, he said, I've inherited empty coffers. He said he had inherited hidden debt. I thought that what he said to the international community through BBC, he should have come to say also in Parliament. But of course, because the speech was written by technocrats, not for him, but for Edgar Lungu, he missed that opportunity. I'm hoping that uh, Minister Finance, when he goes to, come to Parliament to present his budget, he will first of all tell us where the hidden debt is and how much it is, and secondly tell us how he inherited empty coffers when he had 2.9 or $3 billion in reserves, and he should tell us where all the money that's been collected by ZRA on a daily basis has been going to. Yeah. He must tell us how they have managed to open Parliament when they have no money. He must tell us how they have managed to buy, FRA has managed to buy all this maize when they have empty coffers, how the state has not failed to pay salaries for all civil servants when they have, when they have no money in the coffers, how fuel is still in the fuel stations when they have energy yeah. empty coffers. This he must tell. But also, in the budget for 2022, the one thing that the Zambians are looking for, number one, actually there are four things that uh, they must not lose sight of. Number one, there must be a huge increase to the Ministry of Education mm. yeah. so that our children go to school without paying fees. Mm. Surely, God must not forgive us as Zambians. For us to have elected a person on the basis that our children will attend free education and then afterwards we are shortchanged, mm -hmm. God should, shall not forgive us. So we must make sure there is free education. Number two, we cannot possibly allow this government to take us for a ride by, us, by asking us to vote for them that they're going to create jobs for youths and they fail to do it in the first year. They must create jobs. We are very happy that they are cleaning up markets, they are cleaning up bus stations of cadres, and I have to admit that yes, they were saying those were PF hooligans. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are PF cadres, they are PF hooligans. Yes, remove them from the streets. We support you. Remove them from markets. Remove them from bus stations. But as you do that, remember that those are Zambians who also deserve a living. And it is the government's responsibility to provide for them. So don't just harass them and throw them away jobless and they have no money to feed their children on because then you are creating a destitution. He lamented the fact that the levels of poverty in Zambia are so high. Yes, address that, Gwana, please, Bali, address that by creating employment here and now. That we must see in the budget. We also must see in the budget increased allocation to the Ministry of Agriculture. We want our farmers to produce more. If you look at the PF manifesto, we talked about realigning the farmer input support program. Mm. And he has adopted that and actually him has gone even further by saying he will give 12 bags of fertilizer per farmer, he will reduce the cost of fertilizer mm. to 200 kwacha. Let us see that in the budget of 2022 because this is in the interest of the Zambian people. We also want to make sure that uh, President Bali goes out and opens up more road infrastructure because you cannot possibly grow agriculture without investing in the road network. Mm. There are many places where uh, President Edgar Chagwalungu may not have managed to open roads. Those are roads that are waiting for him now to open up. He spoke about uh, water harvesting. If you look at the PF manifesto, and that's why I'm saying this speech was purely a PF manifesto speech. In the PF manifesto, we said that going forward, we're going to expand <coughs> on the number of dams that we're opening up for the sake of increasing irrigated agriculture. President Edgar Lungu, in the five years that he was president, he opened up five new dams, mm -hmm. the biggest one being Momboshi. I hope that President Bali will also show in his budget in 2022 mm -hmm. budget that he has allocated money to opening up new dams. So we are very, very expectant. And all I can do is to wish him the very best. Mm -hmm. I really hope that this time that he has, He's changing the PF government budget because the PF, even during the elections, the government was in place and it was crafting the budget. But it was crafting it based on the Edgar Chagwalungu policies, the Edgar Chagwalungu PF manifesto. I hope that he has had the time now to ask the technocrats to realign the budget to suit his manifesto. Right. Before I ask you my two final questions, I just want you to quickly... A comment on this. Um, the president at the inaugural, uh, is the inaugural speech, he said it's not about changing of power, it's about changing of leadership because power belongs to the people. How would you love this to be practiced, realized in this context, Vice President? 
Yes. In accordance with the constitution, power, executive power, vests in the people of Zambia. Mm. So no one has ever said that there is any difference of opinion on that matter. And no one should try and make themselves a philosopher mm. by saying what is obvious. Uh, that is not any philosophy at all. It's not a philosophical statement. Mm. That's a statement of fact. What changes is leadership. Mm. Power still vests in the people. Mm. And yes, now there is change of leadership. And the new leadership has a duty to deliver to the expectations of the holders of power, mm. the Zambian people. Yeah. And for me, I have to say, yes, the Zambian people exercised their power, whether directly or through intimidation or whatever, or through deceit, but they exercised their power by voting against the PF in favor of the mm. UPND. So for the time being, the UPND, for the next five years, if they do manage the five years, and I wish them the best, mm. it is them now who have the authority to superintend over the affairs of the Zambian people. What you do miss most, and what won't you miss most, being out of government now, Vice President? What I will miss most is waking up every morning, mm. being in the office, 8 o'clock, yeah. and staying in there until 18 hours, 19 hours sometimes, yeah. and getting home tired. I will miss that because I enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, with regard to Parliament, I will miss the ability to use that national platform mm. to air views because, as you are well aware, that is the only platform that is uh, uh, free from mm. any interference. You go there and express your views without let or hindrance. I will miss that. Mm. Uh, what won't I miss? Uh, I'm not sure there is anything that I won't miss because mm. I really... 20 years of being a parliamentarian yeah. makes, you, makes you part of the furniture of parliament. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. uh, I have to say that I made a very conscious decision mm. not to continue as a parliamentarian because I also got to a point where I started to ask myself, is it fair? Uh, am I not uh, mm. becoming greedy that out of the so many mm. residents of Kabwata constituency, it must mm. just be me and me and me alone? Uh -uh. I made a very conscious decision, mm -hmm. and uh, truth be told, I was actually prepared to go and settle down and do things that I've not done over the last uh, uh, 40 years that I've been uh, engaged in uh, public service. I wanted to go are, you, are, you, are you still playing your guitar? Yes, I love to spend mm -hmm. time with friends yeah. playing guitar. As a matter of fact, your friend and mine, yeah. Ricky Dilonga, spends yeah. a lot of time with me. Fantastic. We sing and, yeah. uh, so once in a while we do that. Uh, but I also love to be out uh, in the country. I like going to the farm. Yeah. And I was hoping that I would spend more time on the farm. But uh, President Edgar Lung, oh, damn him. I don't know why. He... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of allowing me to go and uh, rest, he now gave me this very onerous uh, responsibility. Yeah. Talk about President Lung. Usually and sadly, when presidents leave office, the so-called good friends also disappear. What is the situation with them right now? You know, talking about him, the first thing I want to say is that uh, I was extremely touched to a point of almost shedding tears when I saw how gallantly he took the challenge yeah. of going to hand over instruments of governance. Mm. Before going there, he was uh, with a few of us and he got phone calls from people who were in the stadium advising him not to go because they had already picked up that uh, the UPND alliance had uh, mobilized, that when he appears they must boo and so on. And uh, some of the people who were sitting with him were also of the view that he shouldn't go because in the past some presidents never went. But he himself said, I have a duty to my country. I don't mind what traps they have set up for me. I'm not going to shy away. I have a duty. And what I do today shall be done in the future. And I don't want mm. to have a country where losing presidents mm. refuse to appear. Mm. He went there fully aware of the fact he would be booed. And mm. I was with him there. And 
it was so pathetic mm. to see how people who have won an election can demean a person who only a few days ago was their head of state. Mm. That is setting a very bad precedence for Zambia, and I really pray that it never happens again. Yeah. However, I think that President Edgar Chagwalungu acquitted himself very gallantly. Imagine, yeah. just imagine, even when the departure parade was being announced, the master of ceremony, Kenel Moenya, a person who only a few days ago was eulogizing and hero worshipping President Edgar Lungu. He decided that after he had announced the new government officials to depart, he also walked away and left President Edgar Lungu to decide when to leave. That was totally yeah. humiliating. Yeah. But I'm sure that this is mm. one of the legacies that will follow Edgar Chagwalungu. Is he a friend now? He, do, he, does, have, he does have friends. Yeah. Uh, all the time when you go to visit him, there are many people. There are many people are visiting him. He, he himself, uh, when you visit him, says, friends, I thought that you'd run away from me. I was hoping that I would be sitting here licking my wounds alone. Uh, he sometimes even discourages people from going because he thinks that the process of healing must yeah. also be allowed to take place. So he still has friends, yeah. but obviously a question that you asked about how to run the political party and so on in opposition, this he himself has referred to and he has said to me uh, that when he steps down, then I must also be sure that uh, all those friends who are going to him and uh, providing this and this financial resource may also go away. So th this is the reality mm -hmm. of politics. Mm -hmm. This is the reality of politics. And uh, since you asked that question, the one thing I can say to you is that uh, there is no intention on my part as vice president uh, and as member of the Central Committee to indulge in mobilizing resources from any sources that would end up coming to hold this government, when the former government runs on, none whatsoever. Yeah. I'm saying this because I'm alive to the fact that uh, there are some political parties that got funding from sources that uh, may not be in the best, may not have the best interest of Zambia at heart. Mm -hmm. But this the PF must be made clear: we shall not allow that. Yeah. We are going to mobilize the same way that President Michael Sata mobilized, the same way that President Edgar mm -hmm. Chagwe mobilized. We shall mobilize from those who have good intentions for Zambia. I know you're a Christian. What conversation are you having with God now? Every day I ask God, why me? And why at this time? Why wasn't it when we were in government? Because things would have been much easier in government. Why now? And all the time a small little voice tells me, like I said at the start of the program, there are people who God sent to be kings. There are others who God sent to be kingmakers. And if I'm going to be a kingmaker for the sake of the country, so be it, God. So be it. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been an honor. Thank you.